Hello, my name is David Merchant. I'm a PhD student at NBI, part of the University of Copenhagen. I'm going to be presenting something about managing event-oriented workflows. Uh, so what do we mean by static and dynamic systems? Well, scientific workflow systems usually have been defined in this static paradigm, where you define everything at the very beginning. It's a very top-down approach. It allows for a great deal of efficiency savings. You can bundle together to similar jobs. You can make sure that they're going off to the correct resources. But it's very difficult to actually adapt your process. Now what we mean by a dynamic system is one that's designed from the bottom up, so you're only defining individual steps, and this means that they're isolated from each other, so individual steps can fail, succeed, can be changed, can be added later, without affecting any of those other individual steps and the corresponding jobs with them. This makes them very adaptable. Um, so, how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with MEO. Now, MEO stands for Managing Event-Oriented Workflows. And in this, a user just needs to define some patterns and some recipes. They don't define the workflow as a whole, they're just defining these patterns and recipes, because the patterns and the recipes combine to make individual workflow steps. Because, unlike in a static workflow system, uh, where you can kind of just you say, you press a big button and start and say go, we don't have that. You define these patterns, you define these steps. We think it makes more sense for it to be event-driven. So. These patterns and recipes we're sort of defining. The easiest one to kind of complicate head around is recipes, because that's just your simple processing code. This, this is going to be the, the, the code that defines your jobs. It should take, this is where you're going to put your segmentation algorithms, your analysis algorithms, whatever it is you're doing. Obviously, some good code here is going to be generic, so it should like to take some input parameters so that you're not always just processing the same data file again and again, and ideally, it would produce some output. Patterns, however, are a bit more abstract, and they're about matching some starting conditions with a recipe. So remember, we said this was a file event-based system, so if a particular file, or a particular, uh, a particular file, sorry, was created or modified, then we, uh, we want to be able to say, okay, so trigger this processing on that. So as an example, you could say that if a, a NumPy file appeared in a certain directory, then do some segmentation on it. Using these patterns and recipes, we're defining individual workflow steps. We're defining the code and the conditions under which we're starting. And if we define enough of these, we can get what we term an emergent workflow. We're not defining the workflow as a whole, it just becomes an emergent property of these patterns and recipes. So here we defined three patterns where it's will take some input on the left, it's going to be processed via this pattern and the recipe in what we've named pattern 1, 2, 3, and then it producing some outputs. And hopefully it should be obvious how some of this is going to overlap, where our output to directory B in pattern 1 also is their input to pattern 2 and pattern 3. And so we can start mapping these together and beginning to get a very basic workflow. With that being said, let's provide an actual example of how we implemented this. And we did this with MIGMEOW, where this is a Python package this allows users to define these patterns and these recipes, and it's designed to work with the minimum intrusion grid. The minimum intrusion grid being a system that we always ha already have here at KU. It can be referred to as IDMC or ERDA. These are two different front ends we have for it, but they uh, there is a they have the same back end, and it's the back end really is what we're actually concerned with because that's where the job processing is done. That's where the event systems uh, are managed. To help manage this, because this is a little bit much, uh, we've defined a Jupyter Notebook widget, which when users first load up, looks like this, with a big grey box, and that's because it's going to be a visualisation, which hopefully should be a bit more obvious in a minute, once we've actually defined some things. We can also use this widget to define those recipes and patterns. Recipes are rather simple, where you just want to specify a notebook, give it a name, Patterns are a little bit more involved, they've got a few more steps, but it's essentially the same thing. We just want to assign some variables, and once we've done this a couple of times, we'll end up with our visualization where we've got a couple of different patterns as shown here with the green and the red blobs, and a couple of different data locations. These are our inputs and outputs for our for these individual steps. Um, these, sorry, these data locations are shown in the white rectangles, and so here the visualization will start linking these up. So where our inputs and outputs match, they become this chain of processing. Similarly, the, the green and the red shows how we define the appropriate recipe for this. And so this visualization can be a handy tool for users to see that when they actually define these patterns and recipes um, in the make, what processing is actually going to take place. Uh, thank you for listening. I've uh, hopefully presented a bottom-up approach for scientific workflow systems, which is me making this dynamism much easier.